Darren, it's the question you've been probably answering all week, month, whatever. Um, who's there more pressure on, Kerry to stop the five in a row or Dublin to complete it? Ah, uh, Dublin. Yeah? 100%, yeah. I actually love being in the Kerry dressing room. But, but like, if you're down in Kerry, which you are, all the time, everyone's saying to you, you can't let the five in a row happen. See, they're not. They're, the, the lads playing are so young. Like, they know, like, that it's, out of, it's a bit out of their control, it's small, but... Like, realistically, if right was right, Kerry shouldn't be in the Ireland final after all the players that are gone and all the new players come in. They shouldn't be there. Mm. They're there a year too early. Like, So the, by that token, are you half concerned about a heavy defeat? No, no, I just think with this young team, like, like when I say they shouldn't be there, the reason they're there is because of Merrick. Like, they've mm. just, they've progressed quicker than anyone could have imagined. And they deserve to be there. And I just think their attitude, their no fear, mentality is what's got them there and I think that's the way they're going to approach this game and finals are there to be won but if they don't win I don't think it's going to affect their careers it's mm. not going to define them in any, any way yeah because that is the thing uh, like we spoke off air a little earlier and you were saying that this five in a row like it hasn't all happened against Kerry not all against these players so it won't define them but the five in a row not doing it would define Dublin yeah well that's the thing like the five in a row if Dublin do five in a row, will it affect this Kerry group? No. Mm. It'll, they'll be down in the dumps for a few weeks after losing all Ireland final, which is fair enough. Will it affect their careers? No. Um, will it affect Dublin lads? Of course it will. It's, it's, it's a chance of history and their odds on favourites to create history. Like you look at the great Kerry teams, we always talk about Offaly, mm. you know, and that's just the nature of the beast. Um, but no, that's the thing, like, if it was my generation playing, there'd be a lot more pressure on Kerry because they would have done it playing against us on numerous, numerous occasions and got the better of us. Mm. But I just think a lot of these lads are so new, they've never, they've never played Dublin in Championship. So. And this is your first year being away from it. Is it a week like this? Are you bullying to play? Oh yeah, I'm ready to go. I have the boots in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's tough. I'll be honest, I was chatting to a few of the boys. I rang a few, just, just one or two lads now that I just said I'd get in contact with last week and actually on the drive up yesterday and I just wanted to wish him luck for the week ahead and whatever because I'm going to be nine him. and it is it is tough like it's been a tough year to be honest you know it's part of your life mm. since I was in school and then you take it away um, so it's not the most enjoyable thing going to watch games and stuff but it, it, it's just it's just a transition becoming a supporter not being on the outside not knowing what's going on or what way a carrier going to line out or who's going to play mm. and like just probably Physically, you could probably still go to go in in a lot of respects. Injuries, you know, yeah. you take that out of it. But just other life commitments getting in the way. That's it. Like I like I was talking earlier as well um, about um, cup flying there. Yeah. Um, just like my body feels great at the moment. Played away with the club during a lot of games during the summer. It's just that you know you'd be busy working, married, having a nine month old baby girl at home. It just life takes over, and I just felt that I probably would. My body probably wouldn't take the training load anymore. So. It's hard putting that effort for no reward. Mm. And do you think um, Tommy Walsh has a, ch a chance of featuring prominently on this? Like he'd be, you'd be close to him. Yeah, look, I think so. I would surprise you hadn't used more often during the championship. Um, but when he when he was brought on against Tyrone the last day, he was outstanding. I think his experience in the dressing room alone is a massive plus for Kerry. And just his composure and experience when he does come on, which I expect him to come on. Um, on Sunday will be key as well. Mm. If you were to, like every team has its leaders, if you were to say Kerry should really target nailing down a couple of players, is there anyone that you have in mind particularly? I suppose the, the standout one at the moment is Brian Finton. Mm. He Jack Barry, he kind of did it in the league anyway. Did okay, and he's done okay against him. Mm. Like, you know, he's done well, but like that Adrian Spillane has been, um, has, has worked his way into the team and done very well this year, which I think has helped David Moore no end. So I think, um, Adrian's fan will have a big job in his hands there. Obviously, you have Jack McCaffrey, um, who brings an awful lot driving from the back, and I'm sure you could name any one of the forwards mm -hmm. by them. Uh, but obviously, Fenton's obviously the standout one. He's just his um, his rise has been absolutely frightening since he came into the Dublin team. He's an exceptional athlete, but a brilliant footballer mm -hmm. on top of it. So. I saw a stat earlier that nobody has scored anything off Thomas Sullivan in the championship. Blotted out Peter mm -hmm. Hart in the semi final as well. Who would you be looking for him to go on? Because May, like maybe he works well on a forward that likes to roam around. Yeah, like I was there. I was thinking about that, and I was, I was having a conversation with someone recently. We were trying to do our matchups, and we couldn't. 
Yeah. Like we're oh him and him and him and him and I'd be imagining it'd be Mannion or Conor Callahan. For some reason, I have Tom to go on Conor Callahan, and I have Jason Foley to go on Mannion. Mm. But having said, I'm on the outside having to clip. Yeah. Well, Jason Foley, like you were saying, he's unbelievable pace. Incredible. People probably wouldn't cop that. Like in the no, semi-final, he, just he glides. Was, he glides. He was, he was thrown to the wolves against Colin yeah. McShane, left in his own, and Paul Murphy, maybe not used to the sweeper role, was caught in no man's land. Like he did really well considering. He did. He, McShane just kicked great scores. Like to be fair, like there wasn't a whole pile. Some things you have to hold your hands mm. up. McShane's a great forward. Like and he's been playing very well all year. And well, Jason was left very isolated a lot. But um, I'm telling you now, if you let Jason off. Whew, we want to be chasing him in there. Mm. Um, what about the likes of what's on Dublin's bench? The likes of Bernard Brogan. Do you see him being used? If I'm taking my Kerry hat off, obviously you'd love to see Brogan coming on. Like I've an awful lot of time for Brogan, obviously because he's Kerry blood. Mm. But uh, just look, he's one of the great players. Um, I think the fact that he came back this year after fighting back from injury, I think you'd want to be very strange not to want to see him get that reward. But he obviously has a struggle to get on the 26 now at the moment. Um, you know, I suppose as a Kerry fellow, you don't want to see any good players coming off the bench for Dublin, but unfortunately there will be five or six of them coming on. But if he comes on, he'll be dangerous and he'll be a, he'll be a definite threat. Mm. And like, again, off camera we were kind of chatting earlier about the, the effort he put in. And when he came in an Oma, he was initially named to start number 15, ends up being on the bench. The likes of Dermot McConnelly, who was away and wasn't going to be around, he ends up getting a start, comes on against uh, Mayo as well. That would be hard to take. Yeah, like, I don't know, like some people get a bit sensitive when you bring it up and they're on about the bigger picture and the jersey and all this stuff. But as an individual and human nature does take over, of course you want your team to do well. And if a player comes back and he can contribute, great. But it doesn't take away from the fact that as a inter-county player or as any top sportsman, you have to be selfish. And it has to be about you. Mm. And that's the only reason these fellas have got to the top, because they've been selfish and they've put themselves first. And as much as you want your team to win, you want them to win with you playing your part. You want to contribute. So nobody can tell me any different, because I've been in that position before, that as much as you want your team to win, you want to be playing. Mm. And I'd be, if I was in his shoes, I, obviously you'd want Dublin to win if you were him. But you want to be there, you want to be playing, you don't want to see anyone else getting game time ahead of you. So you'd probably, you'd probably be angry, wouldn't you, really, to you see would. someone else come in? Yeah, and it? I don't think you'd be angry with that individual. I think you'd be a bit annoyed with the management, mm. do you know? And I, just, like, I think that's only right. I think it's um, for, the, for the effort a fella puts in. No, I'm not saying that's why a fella should get on the team, but it's, it goes for anyone, mm. do you know? As much as you want to win, you want to be playing, whether it's someone's come back and it's been away and they come in ahead of you, or someone gets game time that you think you should be on ahead of. Human nature is you want to be playing, we've both been in that position where it's great, you've won, but you haven't contributed the way you wanted to, and it's just not the same. Mm. Like 2014 for you, you you came back from injury, worked really hard, and didn't get to play in the final as well. Mm. Or the semi-final, I think. No, like, frustration. I, uh, like I had bad hip surgery in 2013, worked my arse off to get back, um, tore my hamstring, like tweaked my hamstring four or five times the same year, after getting in a position of being on the A team for AVBs and getting tweaks and missing out and missed the semi final, two semi final clashes against um, Mayo because I had a torn tendon that was misdiagnosed as a hamstring injury. And I worked my arse off, didn't get back for a final. Do you know, I've been working hard all year, but I didn't get on. And I was like, it just didn't feel the same for me. Yeah. I was delighted Kerry won, it's an All Ireland, I was on the squad. But I wanted to be on the field contributing, so it never felt the same to me. Mm. And I don't like I don't think unless you're in that position, you can understand it. So people can say, "Oh, that's selfish. You need to look at the bigger picture." Well, your life's been put in hold, yeah. so I don't think people are appreciating that it means everything to you to get those minutes. Even if it was five minutes, it means everything to get them. Yeah, and like obviously you know, like you're not going to be pissed off because such and such got brought on ahead of you or whatever. But. You, it's just, you're just annoyed, you want to be out there, you mm. want to be playing, and that's just the same for every sports person. And you were saying to me that you place a huge value on the number shirt, getting a 1-15, to because you've been named in dummy teams before, mm. but there's, like, can you explain what you're feeling when you pick up the jersey and it's number 13 or number 11? Or yeah, like, we were chatting about it, and a big thing for me, and I, I, I love 
the history of Kerry football. I just mm. love it. I love the fact that um, ever since I've been in the dressing room, there's been um, legends of the game and the management. Do you know, obviously as a forward, do you know, I could be given a number 13 and I could have looked across at one of my good buddies and one of the greatest of all time, Gooch, or Mikey Sheehy was left and I'd be there going, geez, Mikey, or it could be 15 and Morris, or it could be 11, I'd be looking across at Declan or thinking of Ogie Moore do you know mm. and that's the way and that always when I was pulling on that jersey then I'd be there going Jesus the jersey they would have won I want to try and emulate these boys and that like I think it is a big thing like so you're lining up for not Ireland final even if you know you're sat obviously it's great but you don't want to be going out with your 18 or 19 I know it's the people that have done a number but still you're going to look back in that jersey in a couple of years and like you could see a picture up on the wall of a uh, Pat Spillane and you'd be there I should be wearing this I should have the same George up in the wall is him, but mm. uh, you know. So there are small. There are only small things, though, to be honest. But it, uh, like I would, I would have bought into that when I was handing my jersey. Look down and look at the number and think of the players that have worn it before. And one final question then: How's this game going to go? <sighs> I suppose. I think it's a hard one to call in the sense that, like, you should, like most people are going to expect Dublin to win it, mm. and probably should. They're a couple of years ahead of Kerry development-wise. Their structures in place for a long time, but I just don't know. You just don't know with weather, with anything, with fellas. Will this pressure get to Dublin? So I suppose, look, if you're tipping in it has to be Dublin. That Dublin are going to get the final round. But this Kerry team have proven a lot of people wrong all year. So I have the fingers crossed they can do it one more time. Great stuff, Aaron. Man, thank you very much.